What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And today, what we learned here on Treeb Talks is, is that none of y'all are reliable for shit. Yeah, there, I said it. I'm gonna trash talk my fans right now. I post a community post giving you an opportunity of a lifetime to be on Treeb Talks. I mean, let's be real here. And I messaged two of you. And neither one of y'all got back to me, dog. And then I and then I messaged that dude Evan, bless his heart, messaged him, and then he couldn't talk because he was at work. I'm obviously kidding. I love every single one of you guys, and the fact that even six of you wanted to be on the video means a lot to me. But there was supposed to be a fan on this video, and it was supposed to start a trend. Now, after this game, starting from here on out, there is going to be a special guest on during every single Jags preview on Tuesday, so get looking forward to that. Mostly, they're going to be representing, rep, representing, representing, representing the other team that we are going to be facing that week. This opportunity, I wanted to get somebody on. And it's okay, sometimes things don't work out, but nonetheless, we are still here for the Jaguars versus Carolina Panthers week number five preview. And who would have thought, starting the season, that this week five matchup is going to be between Kyle Allen and Gardner Minshew. We're going to talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Carolina Panthers week number five preview. Carolina, much like the Jags, are still finding ways to win despite not having their starting quarterback. Now, this is going to be very, very interesting because I'm really hoping that our pass rush improves this week. I've seen a lot of chatter on Twitter today talking about the difference between the defensive back play and the defensive line play last week. You know, a good, the best pass coverage is a pass rush, you know, that old saying. And I would agree with that because, you know, as I was talking in my recap video, I was thinking to myself, you know, this pass rush really didn't do a lot to help this secondary. They weren't getting after the quarterback. Thus, the, you know, corners had to cover for a little bit longer than they had to. And they were also playing in a soft zone. So, if we're not getting the rush to that quarterback, then nothing matters. Then that does not matter at all. And we have a great front four with guys that, you know, are backing them up. Good depth as well on the defensive line. So, I don't see any reason why we're not causing havoc, why we're not causing opportunities, and why we are not getting after the quarterback. And Kyle Allen is the perfect quarterback to get after if you want to change the game. You've seen how it was with Tennessee. Marks Mariota, he had never had any time to throw. He was not the best quarterback. And, you know, we knocked him off his feet a couple of times and he couldn't make a throw, couldn't make a read. You know, Kyle Allen has definitely, you know, he's, he's outplayed expectations, I would say. Not to the extent of like a Gardner Minshew, but Kyle Allen, I think, has exceeded expectations, and he's doing an all right job. But if we get like guys like six foot eight Calais Campbell in the backfield, if Yan gets sacks, actually gets a sack this week, then I think we should be in pretty good shape against the Panthers. It's all going to come down to this defensive line getting to Kyle Allen and making sure that we are creating a pass rush. One thing that is also one thing that it's also going to come down to is how well we stop Christian McCaffrey. Now, we love to they love to give Christian McCaffrey the ball in the pass game. And one thing that I think we do underratedly good is cover running backs in the pass game. I like Miles Jack and Christian McCaffrey, you know, matched up. I think, you know, we have enough speed on the defense, especially, you know, now with Quincy Williams, Leon Jacobs, he's a speedster too, like we have a lot of speed in this linebacking core, and I think that if they try to get the ball out outside to Christian McCaffrey, I think any one of those linebackers have the ability to uh, chase him down and get him on the ground. Same thing with these secondaries. The secondary, you know, coming from guys like Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson and, you know, A.J. Boye, D.J. Hayden, who's a hard-hitting corner, you know, as well. So they have a ton of talent to build around with the speed for the Jaguars that I think will match up really well against Christian McCaffrey. Now, I think this defense does really match up well against the offense. However, Carolina's defense is another defense that is very talented. And I think these wide receivers have proved over the last couple of weeks that they can make plays and that there's a lot of them 
that can be relied on. You know, getting to see Keelan Cole make his first catch last week as well as Marquise Lee, I think that was huge for, you know, Minshew's development, you know, because now he's building chemistry with all the other wide receivers. And it's also big for, you know, guys like Keelan Cole and guys like Marquise Lee, you know, that are going to now be involved in the offense. Minshew has that chemistry. He's developed it with the uh, wide receivers that he has. So, you know, everybody's going to be kind of clued in on the D.D. Westbrook, D.J. Chark because those are our two best wide receivers right now. And, you know, their top guys are going to be locked in on them. But, you know, you got other guys out there too like Marquise Lee that can make plays. Guys like Keelan Cole that can make plays, you know. Those are the other wide receivers that we have, and I like to see them getting more involved in the offense, and I think that it's good for Minshew. It's good for the wide receivers, but it should be a test. But if Minshew magic continues, then Minshew magic continues. The tight end position has also been something that I low-key have been wanting to talk about a little bit and really talk about how they've exceeded my expectations. You know, I talked to Jason when we did the tight end preview too, and I said that I think, you know, James O'Shaughnessy or Ben Koyak's going to be the starting tight end over Swaim and Oliver. And, you know, it wasn't Koyak, obviously. It's been James O'Shaughnessy. But O'Shaughnessy has been reliable. And he is... Gardner Minshew has made James O'Shaughnessy look like he's playing the best football that he's played in his entire career. You know, no longer are the days where he's just running flat routes. Like, he's getting hit across the middle of the field. He's making plays, making catches. Like, I'm really impressed with James O'Shaughnessy's development so far. And, you know, what he has done. It's been kind of understated. I think what he has been done what he has done to improve Gardner Minshew and to develop Gardner Minshew as well I think that cannot be understated he has played a big part and he's been you know quite the security blanket speaking of tight ends though we also got Josh Oliver back this week you know there's a lot of people that are really excited for this kid I don't really know what to expect from him we haven't really seen him play much at the pro level if at all I don't think yeah I don't think he played at all during the preseason so you know I'm a little skeptical if he's supposed to be this big play vertical threat down the field tight end and you know he performs and he does well and he even gets like even better chemistry with Gardner than James O'Shaughnessy does then by all means let that happen that's going to be awesome and I would love love to see that don't get me wrong but the way James O'Shaughnessy I'm really impressed with James O'Shaughnessy has been able to do so far this year I hope Josh Oliver does perform well but so far I think it's James O'Shaughnessy's show and I think he's playing really really good football all in all I think that the Jaguars have a really good opportunity to win this week I also think that if they establish the run game continue to play Rock Armstead a little bit continue to feed Leonard Fournette and Leonard Fournette continues to play inspired football and especially if we get like Jalen Ramsey back I know that's fucking insane to even think I don't yet you know that's insane probably won't be getting Jalen Ramsey back but this is a game the Jags should be able to win and then the following week, I believe we play the Saints, and that's going to be a real test to see where this team's going to be at. But hopefully we can take down the Kyle Allen-led Panthers, and we can get a dub for Duval.